So do you really think you can win the war on terrorism when people in Western countries vote for idiots like Silvio Berlusconi? Italy has a new prime minister, but he's a very familiar face. The centre-right leader and self-made billionaire Silvio Berlusconi has won a third term in office. With most results counted, Mr Berlusconi's coalition has won majorities in both houses of parliament. The 71-year-old media mogul is warning that with the country's economy faltering, there will be tough months ahead, but says he's willing to work with the opposition to pass much-needed economic reforms. Our Europe editor, Mark Mardell, is in Rome. Not exactly a shy man, Mr Berlusconi hasn't appeared in public since his victory, content to phone the state broadcasters to tell them there would be difficult months ahead and to send an affectionate kiss to all Italians. Before he went into politics, he was already a hugely successful businessman, owner of AC Milan and a media empire. Today he's worth more than £5 billion. When he was PM before, he was always dropping what some regarded as clangers. He stunned the European Parliament, comparing a German MEP to a concentration camp guard, and caused amusement, appearing on holiday with Tony Blair wearing a bandana, probably covering up a hair transplant. He's compared himself to Napoleon and Jesus Christ. In this election, he's calmed down a bit, merely joking about the discovery of poisonous dioxins in mozzarella cheese and having a campaign song, thank goodness for Silvio. He also told a woman complaining of poverty she should have married his rich son. But it's not questionable humour that worries some, but the fact that he's been prosecuted six times for corruption, although always acquitted and always denying any wrongdoing, and that he dominates the Italian media. Mark Mardell, BBC News, Rome. And what would a day on planet Earth be without the usual religious idiocy? Developing story now uh, coming from the Associated Press News Agency saying that a senior Palestinian militant has been killed in an Israeli airstrike in northern Gaza. The man has been identif identified as Ibrahim Abu Olba from the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, a small left-wing faction that has claimed responsibility for recent rocket attacks against Israel. Here's some more classic BBC. The black Africans always come after the Israelis. In Zimbabwe, the main opposition party has called a general strike for Tuesday in protest at the failure so far to publish the results of last month's presidential election. On Monday, the delay was endorsed by the High Court in Harare, which ruled that the Electoral Commission should first investigate problems in the vote. The BBC is banned from Zimbabwe, so Peter Biles sent this report from neighbouring South Africa. There'd been some hope that this High Court ruling in Harare might lead to the release of the presidential election results. But in court, the judge dismissed the case because the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission had argued it was still investigating anomalies in some constituencies. The commission wants a recount in those areas next weekend. The opposition is calling for an immediate nationwide strike, but such action has proved ineffective in the past. The MDC knows the illegitimacy of President Mugabe and his cabinet following the dissolution of parliament on the 28th of March 2008 and therefore does not accept that there is any legitimate government to substantive or substantive president in the country. Zimbabwe's economic collapse has meant that four out of five people are out of work and many businesses are closed. Public protest is also unlikely because of a ban on political rallies and the fear which most Zimbabweans have of the security forces. The opposition leader Morgan Changirai is basing himself for now in neighboring Botswana his spokesman said it was an easier place from which to continue the MDC's campaign of strengthening ties with Zimbabwe's neighbours and putting pressure on Robert Mugabe's government. Peter Biles reporting from Johannesburg and we'll have more on that story later in this programme.